I don't know what I'm going to do when I'm going home. I, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say I got it all together. I don't know if I got it together or not. I might explode. Jabbar Currents was an inmate for nearly 11 years at ADX Florence, the most secure prison in the United States. He landed there after attacking guards at another federal prison. I think what I'm most concerned about is just snapping one day. Just going off. It just, you know, just losing it. And he did. Three days after his February release, Currents sexually assaulted a woman in a park. He was convicted on four charges and currently faces up to eight years for the attack, but could get 20 to life if convicted of a fifth charge. ADX Florence is home to notorious criminals like a 9-11 plotter, Zakaros Musawi, and El Chapo. All inmates are kept in solitary confinement. Some can only lead their cells to exercise alone or in small cages outdoors. But most prisoners at ADX are not infamous criminals, and only about 40% have life sentences. Okay. Currents says his time at ADX exacerbated his mental illnesses. I got borderline personality disorder, schizoaffective disorder, a cyclical mood disorder, bipolar, antisocial personality disorder. Since 2015, there were at least three other cases where prisoners released from ADX committed serious crimes. We spoke with 11 former inmates. Some are living happy and productive lives. Others say their time in Supermax made them even more aggressive. This made me angry, real angry, that I was locked down like that and isolated like that. Ed Arrow is a lawyer who represented 18 ADX inmates in a class action lawsuit filed against the Bureau of Prisons in 2012. Everything here is inmate. What we found was a prison that was full of people who were, many of whom were catastrophically mentally ill and who were receiving little, if any, uh, treatment of any kind. The suit alleged that the BOP violated its own standards by keeping mentally ill prisoners in severe and isolating conditions. One inmate drilled a hole in his forehead. Another ate his own feces. Several died by suicide, according to the lawsuit. When you house somebody at a place like the ADX for years, which we know damages them in a lot of different ways, we owe them the opportunity, a reasonable opportunity to decompress and slowly relearn how to function the way that society expects people to function. The BOP did not admit wrongdoing, but settled the lawsuit in 2016, agreeing to offer group therapy, more time out of the cells, and other reforms. These are my rods. One of the inmates Arrow met at ADX was Rodney Jones, who spent eight years at the Supermax after assaulting inmates at another federal prison. He was released in 2011. Three months prior to me going home, I actually was returning from being in the hospital for a week for an attempted suicide. I didn't know what to expect when I got out. I was scared. It was about 5.30 in the morning. They took me out of my cell, put me in a van, and we drove. My time was up, but I'm still in shackles leg irons, and, 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 and belly chain. I'm a free man, though. They, they dropped me off at uh, Union Station. But, you know, I'm looking, and it's all new to me. So they take the, the lock off, take the thing off. They give me, this, they give me my, my paperwork, and they tell me I can go. I don't know where to go. The idea that they would chain him up and put him in the back of a van and drive him across the country struck me as crazy. If he's too dangerous to be unrestrained in a van with two trained correctional officers, what does that tell you about the mindset of the Bureau of Prisons? Jones says he wasn't prepared for life on the outside. Because I was living with my mom, she, you know, she had given me a room in the basement, and I would wake up, we're waiting for somebody to bring me breakfast when all I had to do was walk upstairs and fix my own breakfast. My mom has a, a patio like this, but I would be afraid to go out there. Like, I would be like, am I allowed to go out that door? 
The ex-prisoners who have succeeded say the key is having a strong support network, stable housing, and a steady job. Me and my wife, we grew up on the same street. We knew each other when we were kids. And one of the first people that I saw on Facebook was her. I was headed back down that road to destruction because, mind you, I had already, on several occasions before marrying her, I had thought about suicide. If you ride up, if it up, it'll live. For him to survive that and come out and find the woman of his dreams, <laughs> get married, you know, move into a house, you know, and stuff like that, and work. God kept him for a reason. Here you go. <laughs> ah, she went in there and got hers. <laughs> Inspectors who visited ADX in 2017 found that around 50 inmates were scheduled for release by 2020. In a statement to Vice News, the BOP said they avoid releasing inmates directly from restrictive housing back to the community, and that when necessary, they provide targeted re-entry programming to prepare the inmate for his return to the community. Former inmates say small changes to how they're prepared for life after prison won't be enough. Reforms have to be made at every level. I want people to take away how a system, basically, that I've been dealing with my whole life, failed me from, from 10 years old from now. That system basically just depersonalized me and made me into a thing. And then what happens is you become an animal or you become your, your own worst enemy. <laughs> 